纽约的时报广场把这个《速度与激情八》的这个预告片首播的时候，它在全球。吸引了一点三九亿次的播放，而在中国首播这部预告片之后呢，收到的播放量是三千多万，所以可以说是整个在社交媒体上得到的回馈是非常非常好的，所有的人都对此非常的期待。《速度与激情八》将在四月十四号在全球上映，而呃，它将与《速度与激情九》和《速度与激情十》在接下来四年当中形成一个三部曲。真的是非常令人期待的一整个的系列。那么今天呢，我们也非常荣幸的请到了《速度与激情》背后的两位很重要的人物啊、呃，其中一位呢是从二零零一年《速度与激情》系列就开始担当制片人，他同时也是好莱坞最高产的制制作人之一。让我们非常欢迎呃 ，Neil H. Moritz 先生，他们今天能够来到现场。有另外一位嘉宾，他是从二零零六年《东京漂移》开始就担任《速度与激情》系列的这个编剧，他也是《速度与激情八》的制作人。我们来啊、呃，掌声欢迎我们的 Chris Morgan 先生。<笑>我们在电影当中看到的这些疯狂的特技，都是他的创意啊，真的是非常了不得的。那么我马上要请上台的这一位嘉宾，他入行二十五年来，有非常多呃很多元化而且非常前沿的作品。他作为 n b 导演呢，获得了很多很多的奖项，而作为导演，他有很多叫好又叫座的作品，包括像我们都很熟悉的《偷天换日》，还有《冲出康普顿》。我们来欢迎《速度与激情八》的导演，让我们欢迎 F Gary Gray 先生。Ladies and gentlemen, please let's welcome Miss Jelly Stan. Decker Shaw 这个角色也是被很多人认为在中国最受欢迎的好莱坞影星之一。Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Jason Statham. Of the global tour, thank you so much for being here. And this press conference is actually live streamed right now at this moment all over China. So, would you like to say a quick hi to the fans here in China? Let me start with you,、um, Jason. Hello, China. Uh, I'll be down in a minute. <laughs> oh no. I've heard that you've also practiced your Chinese a little bit. You know how to say ni hao, right?、Uh, ni hao. Where you got that rumor from? But I can't say ni hao. You just did. <laughs> And Gary, a quick hi to our Chinese fan. Ni hao, China. Hey, thank you for having me. And Shelly. Ni hao. That was very native, actually. Oh, don't say. 查理斯·塞隆的这个“你好”非常非常的流畅啊，而且还带有一种很轻松、很很很愉悦的这一种北京腔啊。
Now, please have a seat. Um, Let's talk a little bit more about this movie. This is actually a reunion after 13 years, Sorry. right? Since 2003, when you were taking on um, the Italian, Italian job, job. Yes. right? So, um, how is it different this time? Here? Well, it's a lot bigger. That's for sure. The cars were smaller back then, and uh, it's a lot more action. And um, I got to tell you, after um, you know, 10, 13 years or so, I'm happy to reunite with Jason and Charlize and they did an amazing job in this movie. I love what they brought to the Fast franchise. And, and Jason, this is actually your uh, uh, your first reunion after 13 years since last time, 2003, and on the Italian job. So, uh, how's it been? Yeah, it seems like, a, you know, an eternity ago. It's, uh, you know, it's, fun. it's great when you get to, you know, Familiar face is always a pleasure to work with, and you, you get like a shorthand, and it's you know it's always good to to have that sort of uh, relationship reignited because you know we end, more often than not we end up traveling the world and we never get to see each other as often we'd probably like to. So it's good to finally get uh, strapped in and do something together again. Mm -hmm. And Charlize, what do you feel about this movie? About this film? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm very excited. I'm super excited for you guys to see it. I think you're gonna love it. I'm very honored to be a part of the eighth part of this franchise and this family. And um, yeah, really honored that they asked me to join and mess things up a little bit. <laughs> of course, of course. And Gary, um, what made you decide to take on Dark and Fast and Furious? Well, first and foremost, the story. The twist in the saga where Dom goes rogue um, is a phenomenal story. I gotta give props to my, my writer, Chris Morgan, my producer, Neil Moritz. Oh, look at that. I do, I do, because the, the storyline is a lot different than what you would expect. Um, the theme all along, for most of the movies, have been family, and Dom goes up against family, and so that, that, that's a major challenge for the Are franchise, and I love challenges. I went from straight out of Compton to fast, Fast eight, okay. and um, okay, the challenge was part of the reason in the story. And of course, I've had the, the biggest cast and the best cast on planet Earth. So those are the reasons why I made it to the franchise. Well, like you said, challenges, a lot of challenges. It must be a daunting task to take on such a huge saga uh, franchise. So this time, what do you have on the table for this? Well, I, I, like I said, the story is so different. Um, I like to think that we took the action to the, the next level, lot. and with um, the acting, what Charlize brings to the franchise um, is something that I believe makes everyone kind of step their game up. You know, performance-wise, I think that the story is phenomenal, and um, you know what I bring. Um, that's a surprise. <laughs> And that's a surprise. I want you guys to see it. All right, of course we'll see it. Uh, and Shalise, what attracted you to be in a Fast and Furious movie? Well, I'm a fan. Um, and so, as a fan, to be asked to be in a you know franchise that you would love is an incredible honor. And then, on top of that, to be you know to be encouraged to come and play the first female villain. Which to me is just, you know, that's a crazy honor. And and to have the encouragement from everybody from the studio, from the producers and the writers, to just, you know, push the envelope and to be as psychotic as possible. Who doesn't want to have that job? I mean yeah, you'd be an idiot to turn that down. Well, you mentioned mess things up a little bit, you mentioned psychotic. Tell us a little bit yeah, about the role mean. you take on. Besides so just me talking you know, about myself. Oh, yeah. really? So now, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm talking yeah. about the character. Male, you got a male. Yeah, the, the character. Tell us a little bit more about her. She seemed evil, mysterious, among many other characteristics. Yeah, she's she's very manipulative and conniving, and um, I think she has a bit of a fascination with the human condition and how to kind of make people do things, how to ultimately turn them into robots. Um, but she, uh, I don't know, I guess, I never thought of her as just a, an evil character. I think she's driven by, you know, some things that I think, unfortunately, a lot of the world is driven by. Um, she's definitely rapacious and wants uh, a tremendous amount of power and you're not quite sure why so there's a mystery about what she's doing with all of this 
but it's fun to kind of watch her go about uh, getting this this man who's so he's such an he's iconic within the structure that he's kind of designed for himself and to see her kind of break that is I think very fun to watch I have to say if you're a fan of this franchise and you love obviously our main characters and then you love the villains Charlize as Cypher is hands down the best villain in this entire franchise wow. absolutely <laughs> Well, you haven't seen it yet, so. <laughs> but that's very nice. Thank you. Well, if you have seen it, you notice that there's a scene, you also saw it in the trailer, that um, Shalise, you, uh, Cypher, actually, Cypher kisses uh, John in front of Letty. And, and I saw the reactions of the fans. Oh, they are they are shocked to see that scene. So how is it like? you be like, they're upset with you, girl. So tell us a little bit more about that scene. I, you know, it's actually, that scene kind of plays in, in, in two parts. It's, it, that's kind of the end of a continuation that happens later with, um, with Dom and Cypher. And it's, it's a scene I really like because it's a theory that Cypher really believes and lives by. And that's that no matter what you do or how conniving and manipulative you can be with somebody, they still have free will. And it's, I, it's a, it's, a concept that I'm a fan of myself, the idea that nobody makes us do anything. And um, so, not to give it all away, but the scene afterwards, he says, why did you do that? You didn't have to do that. And I basically say, I didn't do anything. You did that. And what do you think she thought of that? And so it really is a play on manipulation, I guess. Oh, sexy kind of manipulation, though. <laughs> well, let's talk to another sexy guy, Jason. Let's hear it from Jason's fans, huh? <laughs> so, Jason, there's more Decker Shaw in this movie, a lot more action scenes. Um, tell us a little bit more about that role. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's hard to turn up and not do action. I mean, that's part of the... Uh, the recipe for this, uh, which makes it, you know, which I think that a lot of fans turn up for. It's a huge portion of uh, the appetite that it creates. You know, some of the set pieces that, uh, you know, that are, are in this, are, it's always difficult to think how you're going to better the last one. Uh, and, you know, considering the last one, it's a bit of a head scratch, but they actually, they've pulled it out the bag. They really have, they've done everything, you know, times ten. It's, uh, it's remarkable how they keep doing it, but they seem to keep doing it. But how did you involve him? I mean, uh, well, my involvement, obviously, I'm, you know, I'm playing Deckard Shaw. He's wrapped up in prison. Uh, we've got to get him out of there, and uh, we've got a great breakout. Uh, that is, um, you know, it's a great. It's one of the first set pieces that we have to do with Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson. Uh, so any scene that you do with him is always going to be good because he provides a fair amount of muscle that I have to go up against, uh, and it's, uh, you know, it's. It's always a good contrast with him and me, you know, it's brute force against, you know, agility, whatever you like to call it. Um, so yeah, we, we get a lot of drama that has to happen throughout the film. It's a, it's a great piece for me to come and, you know, get stuck into. Well, since you bring up uh, Dwayne Johnson, that scene where you fight alongside with Dwayne Johnson, fight against Dwayne Johnson, actually, that was amazing. That's incredible. Inside the prison where the two um, try to break out of it. Um, do you do any preparations, special preparations for that scene? Uh, yes, nervously trembling. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's those kind of things that they require, uh, you know, a certain physicality. Um, you know, Dwayne is a very physical man and I've been doing this, you know. What he's saying is, it all comes natural to him. He just shows up and yeah, kicks ass. That's, that, that's what it is. <laughs> Shake weights. Yeah, just turn up and run around. Hit me around the head. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you have to prepare. You can't come physically, you can't come unprepared to these kind of roles because, you know, you want to uh, you want to put yourself into every frame, and it's important to be a part of it and not to rely on stuntmen doing uh, you know certain things for you. And you know, I take great pride in doing that, and so does Dwayne. So uh, the combination works out well. 
Uh, and also Deckard Shaw, he actually went from the bad guy to the good guy in, in this movie. Uh, how do you think the, the fans and the audience is going to take this? Can he be trusted? Well, Deckard Shaw was never a bad guy. Uh, he was only a bad guy in the eyes of the Dominic Toretto camp. <laughs> uh, you know, I've always been a good guy. I've always had principles that people might not have liked. But, uh, you know, my transition to working with a team is, uh, you know, is obviously for a... a, a a sort of similar cause, Cypher is the one person that my family needs a bit of justice from as well, so she's like the common enemy. That's to get sort of dealt with. Well, this movie is actually the biggest Hollywood production shoot inside Cuba, which was very, which was very interesting. Charlize, do you remember a few interesting things happening in Cuba? You were there, right? Yeah, it was my first day of shooting on the film, actually. Uh, I, for me, hands down, the most memorable, not just on this film, but I think on any film, to, you just, you, you can't take, I mean, there's something super special about, since the embargo being the first big production shooting um, there, and to be, you know, one of four actors that were there, I mean, that's really, yeah, that's really special. And it was great because the energy of, the Cubans and um, just being out in the streets with them and there was something that was just very authentic and we were capturing that and it felt super special for this film so hands down very memorable day for me. Well, motion Pictures is without borders. Um, Gary, you remember? Oh absolutely. When uh, we shot the Italian job we got a chance to shoot in what I consider a standing work of art which is Venice. This is the second time in my career I've been able to work with Charlize and Jason and we were able to shoot in a standing work of art, which Havana is, the history, um, how just everything about Cuba is so different from any place on the planet Earth. You can throw a camera in the air, it can land anywhere and you'd have a beautiful shot. So it was very special to me for that reason and um, to be one of the first um, the first studio film to shoot there and to bring the infrastructure to Cuba was very, very um, special and a profound experience for all of us. We are sitting here actually, uh, if you've noticed, in front of a submarine. There's a submarine behind us. When we were all thinking that the Fast and Furious 7 or the Fast and Furious 8 cannot be any bigger than the Fast and Furious 7, and it actually does get bigger. So tell us a little bit about uh, the shooting in Siberia. Was it hard to pull off? Uh, definitely hard. Um, Neil Moritz, my producer, got us the budget to, to, to get a submarine, and uh, uh, that was helpful. Thank you, Neil. Um, <laughs> No, you know, to shoot in uh, Iceland and different parts of the world, it was hard because we had to ship all of our cars, the military vehicles, the Lamborghini, all of these vehicles, and um, it, you know, to go 150 miles an hour on the ice is very, very tough. So um, I credit my second unit director, Spiro uh, Rosados, um, Jack Gill, Andy Gill, all these people who went there for us and really put together what I consider one of the best action sequences ever. But to shoot on ice with this many vehicles, with the military um, uh, vehicles, it was amazing, but it was tough. <laughs> it was the first time as well they've ever seen that much hardware in ice. Mm, of course, it'll be worth it when you see on on, when you, on the big screen. No so, question. <laughs> so Shelly, Cypher gets to drive a load of streetcars remotely, but don't you want to get behind the wheels of a real muscle car? Yeah, I mean, Charlize was very uh, upset when she found out that she wasn't going to drive any cars. But Cypher, I think, was very excited to know that she was going to have her own badass jet. Um, I think it was a smart thing to kind of isolate me from that world that people kind of associate the gang from being around and... Um, yeah, it was, it was, I mean, look, I think I'm owed a free ride somewhere along the line, some kind of a street race, something, somewhere, but I, I think what we ended up doing in the film was actually really cool. Yeah, she had a billion dollar jet. Yeah. So from a Mini Cooper to a billion dollar jet, I think she did, uh, <laughs> she did well. And, and Charlize, 
you often play this complex, solitary female role in all kinds of movies. Is it is it a personal preference, or um, do all the? I mean, more of these kind of characters come up to you. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, look, I whatever it is, I I am incredibly grateful for the opportunities that I've been. Um, is, has been offered to my way. I feel um, very lucky to, you know, be working on things that I absolutely love. I have a love and a fascination for the human condition, and I find that there's a little good and a little bad in all of us. So I don't necessarily compartmentalize them and kind of draw thick black lines around them and call them just one thing. I think. They're all a combination of a mixture of a lot of things. I think a lot of times, the ones that people think are strong are sometimes the more weaker, vulnerable characters that I've ever um, got to kind of live in. I don't know. I feel like we women are complex and complicated, and we're not just one thing. So I feel like I want my characters to somehow reflect that. I feel like in our job, we're lucky to when we get to hold a mirror and it reflects society and I do feel that there's a part of me as a woman that wants to be authentic to what I think women are out there in the world and we're a little bit of everything. Just like Jason thinks that Deckard Shaw is not a bad guy. Love everything. Yeah, right. <laughs> a little bit more than you. <laughs> Charlize, you are a respected actor and any acting tips for Chinese actors? <laughs> I, I, no, oh God, I, no, you know, I, I've had um, great support my whole career from people who just encouraged me to not give up. And I think this, the world of acting can be one that can kind of beat you down and, um, I don't, I would just say to anybody who wants to be an actor, try and be as resilient as you possibly can because you're going to need it. Um, it doesn't happen. Uh, the first couple of many times, but um, it's one of those things that if you love it, you're there, you're prepared, you're ready, because when the opportunity comes, that's really when we all kind of shine. So it's just being ready for that moment. That's it. Uh, let's break away from the sentimental sentiment for, for, for a little while and talk to Gary about the cars. It isn't a Fast and Furious if it is not about the cars. So tell us about the cars, Gary. Well, they're fast and they're expensive. <laughs> it's, um, I believe we destroyed hundreds of cars, and I took great pleasure at um, destroying a few Lamborghinis, a few Bentleys, a few Mercedes Benzes, and a few vintage cars. Um, and although I'm a car guy, and it hurt my heart in some way, I did it for you and your entertainment. So when you see these cars destroyed, just think. Gary did this for me. Um, no, I, I, I love it. Part of the reason why I did this is because um, I just came off of somewhat of a dramatic film, and this is like a, almost like being a kid in a, to a toy shop. You know, I used to play with Hot Wheels when I was a kid and Legos and things like that. So to be able to kind of jump into a story that's so strong, but to also play with these types of toys, cars from the 50s in Cuba, tanks and submarines in Iceland, remote control, driverless cars in New York City, that's a director's dream. And I had all the toys and we had a lot of fun. Of course, of course you do. Well, the whole world is talking about the Chinese market. At the very beginning of the press conference, I mentioned Fast and Furious 7. It's still the number one Hollywood movie here, it, all, here in China. It I is heard Monster one. is a close second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what I heard today, just saying. Um, so, what what's ma what makes you think of China? Um, do you would, would you make any special adjustment or any creativity wise uh, adjustment for for Chinese market? I think China Chinese market is amazing and it is massive and um, I think that there's a the future um, looks phenomenal. You know, this was a great partnership. Uh, with this movie, I'm looking forward to the future, and um, you know the market. Like I said, it's just it's so 
it's so open, it's so open, and we're looking forward to creating um, in and around China and around the world for China. For China. Wow, wow, looking forward to that. Um, thanks for all the questions, but here comes a little challenge. We call that China challenge. Uh, China challenge. Okay. <laughs> China challenge. I like to invite Shalise. Would you please stand up and take this China challenge? Well, we all know that Shelly is just good and active. I have to go first. <laughs> yes, you have to go first. But I'm wondering if she can handle a Chinese acting. Um, we all remember the scene where uh, Cypher had control of all those cars, and when they crashed together, she said, ouch. So in Chinese, it's ayah. Ayah. So you're going to reenact that scene, OK? <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to try to direct now. Uh, 我想让蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡蔡
Persistent. Mm. Persistent. Shelly's? That's good. Uh, uh, the movie, uh, Mind Shattering. Is that yeah. one word? That's two words. No, with a hyphen. It's a hyphenated exactly. for one word. I'm a foreigner. Who knows? <laughs> uh, my character? Uh, resentless? Mm. Re relentless? 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 Relentless. Yeah, yeah. relentless. Persistent. Persistent. <laughs> okay, good, good. Uh, next one. I have, a, I have a question for uh, Jason. Um, since now you have starred in two uh, Furious movies, uh, what do you think, uh, what, what, what kind of characters do you, characteristics do you think of this whole series differs from uh, other action movies? Uh, you know, I think it represents uh, a lot of the people in uh, street culture around the world, you know, have power, different people come together and, uh, you know, they can share, share relationships and they become a family of themselves without even being sort of a blood family. And I think it, it really speaks to a, a, large, a large element of people around the world. I think it's a global appeal. Uh, and I think a lot of movies have that have a difficulty expanding into different countries but i think this was this one makes it quite unique thanks next okay okay好我来见面哦我想问一下杰森斯坦森我听说您和李连杰是非常要好的朋友我想问一下你们会切磋一下功夫这方面的事情吗 <laughs> you are good friends with Jet Li. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, any maneuver between you two? Any <laughs> any competition? I mean, action-wise. Uh, you know, Jet Li is one of the greatest martial artists ever to you know to, to grace the silver screen. He's one. He's one of the, the the big inspirations for me as a as a person who does action movies. You know, so to be in his company, you learn so much. I mean, I. I was trying to count how many films I've sort of done with him now. It's, uh, it's probably five or six. Uh, and I'm always inspired and I'm always in awe of his authenticity and how much he cares, and the emotional content that he puts into his, into his roles and that physical element. I feel that he, you know, it's, it, this, kind of, uh, this kind of passion is lost in, in so many action films that we see in, in Hollywood. And uh, I feel that he is very unique, and uh, you know I'm, I'm very proud to be a friend of his, and, uh, and I'm always excited to see him. And uh, uh, you know, if we ever do anything down the line, it's always a good, you know, a good thing to think about. That's great. Uh, next one. Okay. My question is for our director, Jason. Uh, we know that uh, you have been to a lot of places like New York and Cuba and Iceland. So I want to know uh, which place is the most difficult to shoot, or which impress you most. Um, each location gives you different challenges. I mean, if you can imagine trying to race uh, through Times Square, New York, at 100 miles an hour with that traffic, it's tough. Um, if you can imagine trying to uh, race a Lamborghini on ice at 200 miles an hour uh, while being chased by a bunch of vehicles. Um, a military vehicles, that's tough as well. Um, in Cuba, if you're racing a car from the 1950s at 150 miles an hour and turning corners without it falling apart, I gotta give um, credit to <clears throat> my uh, picture car uh, uh, captain, Dennis McCarthy, he was amazing at pulling all this off, shipping the cars, building the cars, and so, um, those are some of the difficulties that I ran into. Uh, it's just, you know, high speeds and traffic, ice, and with vintage cars, so it's very tough. Different kinds of challenges. Different challenges, for sure. Uh, next. Oh, Jason, sorry, forgot you. <laughs> what do you need from me? <laughs> well, because the question was, was to both of you. Uh, which one is more difficult? You've, you've taken the, the shooting to all kinds of places all around the world, New York, Ireland, Cuba. So which one do you think is the more challenging? Me. <laughs> For sure, she's like a country all on its own. <laughs> it's like running into a brick wall. 
Uh, are, you, are you asking me what's the... Uh, what's the most challenging place uh, to shoot? I don't know. I think, uh, you know, not getting injured is challenging <laughs> enough. You know, we, we really put ourselves in, in the firing line, and I think that's a bigger challenge. It's not so much the location, it's about what we're expected to do and trying to stay safe uh, because we're trying to blur the lines of like really you know death defying stuff and i think that's what really counts is trying to do these things that are in camera uh and and, and stay safe so that's the big problem after all we're all standing sitting <laughs> next question uh hello i'm from alex china uh, i have a question for the director gary gray uh, the series of the best of a, a period always bring a lot of fun, excitement, and new things to audience. Uh, like it's seen shot in Dubai in Best Seven. Uh, the cars cross a super high-rise building, let's say, yeah. So this time for Best Eight, is there any specific details or surprising stunts that the uh, audience will experience in IMAX 3D version? Well, I can tell you from the um, mind of Chris Morgan, um, these amazing action sequences, um, I think he's probably got a, 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 a small bit of uh, the wrecking ball scene that takes place in Germany, uh, where this wrecking ball just smashes through a bunch of military vehicles. Um, and I think that on an IMAX screen, it's gonna be absolutely incredible. Um, as you can see, there's a submarine behind us. So if you love car chases, if you could imagine a Lamborghini being chased by a submarine and IMAX on an IMAX screen, that's going to be incredible. Um, I love the detail that you can see, like from my mind to the audience, so much detail on an IMAX screen. I can't wait for you to experience that. But between the, you know, experiencing Cuba, not just the races, but the, the architecture, and the colors and just the culture. Um, I think you can get a lot in IMAX, a, 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 a ton. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, let's see. Okay, we have, here. Okay, okay, we have I'm have Kelly one. from Mingu TV Live Now. So could you first of all <laughs> say hi to all the audience? He's live streaming. Mm -hmm. She's live streaming oh, through, that, through hey. that cell phone. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I have one question for Charlize. So as we all know that it's the first time you have ever joined this Fast and Furious series. So would you like to go on playing this role, playing this uh, maybe Agnes or the high-tech terrorist in the following episodes? Thank you. I, I could only be so lucky. I, we'll see what the fans think. <laughs> I think you guys will get to determine that. I, I had a great time making the film and um, yeah, she's definitely not fully explored. There's a lot we can do with her, but she won't turn good like good old Decker here. I can promise you that much. <laughs> 刚才刚才查理斯赛龙说要看粉丝们怎么说了，他接下来还会不会在《Fast and Furious》的九和十当中出演？那么粉丝怎么说啊？That's really sweet. Thank you so much, guys. Um, any other questions from the media before we take on fans' questions? Okay. All right. It's a good time to ask questions from our fans right now, okay? I'm so excited to see you here, and uh, ma many Chinese fans call you King of the Rome, and uh, I do like this nickname, and King of the Rome? Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> awesome, I love that I'm male, that's uh, fantastic. Uh, in Chinese name is Sai Huang. Sai Huang. Yes. Sai Huang. Sai Huang. 
and I, I'm going to take a really important exam next week, so I can. Uh, I, I, I want to ask you if you can give me an encouragement, like a hug or something else. And if I fail, if I fail the exam, I can go back to the American to give back the hug to you. You 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 want a hug? Come yeah. on, give you a hug. Prepare the question now. <laughs>、um, I'm wondering that if there are any similarities between your、uh, role, the cipher, the high tech terrorist in the film, and yourself in your daily life. Are there any similarity between? That's a good question.、Um, Jason thinks quite a bit. Five、uh, percent. It depends on the day. Let's just start there. Uh, I don't know. I think, you know, I mean, it's easy to be in circumstances that are comfortable and say that you would never do, you know, anything terrible that another human being is doing. And she's obviously chasing this thing that's so, you know, I think ultimately leads to nothing—not happiness or、um, any kind of peace or anything like that. She just wants this, like, the, this ultimate power for. We're not even 100% sure why. So there's there's something about her that's so,、um, you know, I would like to think that hopefully I would never become somebody like that. I I I'm very aware that all of that stuff kind of comes and goes and doesn't mean anything. And at the end of the day, it really is about family and people and you know that stuff. So I don't know.、Uh, I like her clothes. <laughs> yeah, I'm、oh, sorry. I have a I have to ask.、And、my friends from the、uh, they, they asked me to.、Uh, they, they are in America and they, they can't fly to Beijing to meet you. And they asked me to ask a hard question. <laughs> Can I? Sure. Okay. Come. <laughs> She's not gonna take a shower in the next few days. I mean that bad. Uh, we're gonna see if we can get some sunburn fans. Okay. Hello, Jason. Hello, man. Don't ask for a kiss. <laughs> Do you love Chinese food, and do you love to take on another role? No, do you take on a role in another Fast and Furious movie? Uh, I, uh, the second part, I'm not sure how the story goes、uh, for the, you know, for the、uh, Fast and Furious Nine. We'll have to wait and see.、Uh, I'll have to butter these two people up if that's going to happen. <laughs> But.、Uh, Yeah, I love Chinese food.、Uh, in fact, we're going to go for a very nice meal tonight somewhere and、uh, indulge. Yes. They come tonight, they'll go to eat some Chinese food. Next question. Hello, Jason. Hello. 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 Hello.
There's a present for you, Jason. Present? Yeah. A present coming up. Not a question. What's that? <laughs> okay, I, I think our staff is going to keep it and show it to Jason later, okay? Huh? What uh, is it? It's called uh, Small Horror in Chinese. Ah, it's a little monkey. Uh, it's a little monkey in a jar. Not a cherry jar, it's a monkey in a jar. Uh, That's cute. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a traditional handcraft. Wow, it's traditional handcrafted. Wow. A monkey in a jar. Hugging a carrot. It's very thoughtful. Thank you. So, your question? It's a very personal question. In 2014, when I met Jason, do you remember me? She met you in 2014. Do you remember her? <laughs> Don't tell them the story, right? <laughs> okay. but in Beijing, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, How yeah. are you? <laughs> Time's, <laughs> Time's flowing on, hasn't it, honey? You didn't, you didn't change a bit. So huh? <laughs> <laughs> honey, your mom. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I actually met Jason in 2014. Good to see you again. Too. <laughs> you look different this time. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you for your support. I love you, Jason. Thank you, thank you for your support. Lots of love. Hi, darling. All right, thank you very much for all of your questions from the press and from the fans. Those are very, very lovely. And finally, I like to propose another, the final China challenge. I would like to invite all of you to stand up and take on this challenge. Um, this is gonna be, is this gonna be really fun because you all remember that uh, scene where. The hot girl launched a race. I would like to have the honor to, uh, with all of you, to launch, to officially launch the race for Fast and Furious 8. Okay, so uh, pick a handkerchief and please wave it high up in the air. I'm going to make the for mini skirts. <laughs> I got all excited. <laughs> okay. So, um, we are going to count down from eight, okay? We are going to count down from eight. So, are you guys ready? Yes, we're launching the race. A race launch for Fast and Furious 8, okay? Start the countdown from eight. Ready? On stage, to take a group photo now, okay? With our media, uh, we're now letting the media take a photo with us. We're going to take a photo with the media. Okay, so we're going
Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Jason, Shalise, Gary, Chris, and Neil. Thank you very much. Okay,我们这里进行八个中国新闻发布会就到此结束了。不要忘记四月十四号带上你的朋友和家人一起去影院观看二弟、三弟、IMAX三弟的中国剧目。所有的剧是都有，然后在二刷、三刷、N刷
呃 ，New Age Marines 今年的作品包括 Chris Pratt 和 Jennifer Lawrence 主演的《太空旅客》，Passenger， 这也是他的作品。那他之前的代表作包括《洛杉矶之战》、《洛杉矶之战》、《火车传奇》，还有《冒牌天神二：极限特工》等等。
，就是吃中国菜。那已经把全套的计划都已经铺好了，不知道他今晚的菜单会是怎么样的。一会儿粉丝如果跟他互动的时候，可以问一下。
那决赛赛程呢还在，把所有的精力和时间都放在粉丝身上，很耐心的跟所有的粉丝去签名和合影。
那么随着杰森斯坦森的离场，我们也把速度与激情八的红毯的部分完满的结束了。谢谢各位粉丝的参与，谢谢你们耐心等待。请在离场的时候记得要带好所有的随身物品。那么我们四月十四号在影院见，也请大家去二刷、三刷、三刷，祝贺速度与激情。